and welcome back to yet another hollow week video this whole week we are making creepy videos to honor that of halloween and so we've got videos about the horror aspect of warhammer 40k all leading up to halloween which we've got a creepy pasta for you to enjoy but today we are talking about blanks in warhammer 40k and just how eerie and strange they are so with that being said let's dive right in in the grim dark future of the 40k universe, war is waged against man, Xenos, and demon. Ever since the first psychers were born, humanity has evolved tremendously, for the better and worse. Mutations have created the beastmen, squats, and ratlings, just to name a few. And just like there have been powerful psychers, so too has humanity spawned forth the soulless. These humans have the genetic mutation known as the pariah gene, and as such do not have a psychic presence in the immaterium. All humans have a psychic imprint, be it small as a torch, or as strong as a burning tempest. But these blanks bear no flame. The stronger the psyker, the more of a connection they have to the warp. But just by being near a blank, the psyker's connection weakens, and so too does their power. A blank is technically the antithesis to that of chaos, and therefore they cannot become possessed by demon nor pledge themselves to a chaos god. However, there has been at least a single instance of a blank demon host, the imperial assassin known as Spear. Spear was born as a human untouchable, but he was captured by the Sisters of Silent and brought to Terra where the clade Calexis experimented upon and augmented him in an attempt to create a much more powerful and deadly form of Calexis assassin. It is not known whether these augmentations or his unnatural abilities made him a black pariah. Spear was eventually deemed too unstable and dangerous by his clade's masters to be left alive. He was then placed in the care of the Sisters of Silence and was sent aboard one of their lone vessels, bound for the heart of a nearby sun. Unfortunately, the vessel was intercepted by a renegade vessel carrying the Dark Apostle, Erebus. Boarding the sister's vessel, the word bearers killed all aboard with the exception of Spear. Sensing the usefulness of such a unique specimen, Erebus found a new purpose for his captive. He forced Spear to undergo a painful and vile chaos ritual in which a minor demon from the Immaterium was bonded with the former assassin. This bonding created a highly dangerous apex predator, a counter psyker, capable of redirecting a psychic attack directly upon the psyker that enacted it. In order to utilize his ability, the Black Pariah had to first obtain a sample of his target's blood. This was a necessary component that helped him synchronize with his target's psionic abilities in order to reflect their attacks. Two standard years after the events of the drop site massacre on Istvan V, Erebus tasked his deadly minion to assassinate none other than the Emperor. Spear then spent an innumerable amount of time in order to painstakingly reach his ultimate goal, a document that possessed a minute drop of the Emperor of Mankind's precious blood. Spear obtained the document on the world of Dagonet, bringing him in direct conflict with an Imperial execution force composed of Imperial assassins from every clade. These assassins were there to assassinate the traitor, Horus. Though the mission was ultimately deemed a failure, resulting in the death of all of its members, this confrontation resulted in the Black Pariah's destruction as well. Horus later chastised Erebus for his audacious plan to assassinate the Emperor, declaring that when the opportune moment finally dawned, it would be him, and him alone, who would kill the Master of Mankind. And just like that, the one and only Black Pariah faded into the depths of history. Spear was such a rare case, since demons find the mere presence of a blank to be painful, to the point of being outright banished back into the warp. However, the stronger the demon, the more they can resist the aura of the blank. As I've stated before, psychers can feel pain by their proximity to a blank, but even regular people also get the sense of dread and disgust by the aura of the blanks as well. 
This can be as minute as a feeling of hatred towards the individual for literally no reason at all, to having the urge to kill them on sight. That being said, blanks are very, very rare. Almost 1% per generation per world will have the gene, and most don't live very long due to this aura of unease. For it is not uncommon for mothers to kill the baby soon after birth. In the eyes of the Imperium, they are literally living weapons to be used against demons and all things coming from the warp. In the lore, this can be seen when Gilliman is fighting against Magnus on Luna. He uses the Sisters of Silence, which are Null warriors, to basically dampen the powers of Magnus and so that Gilliman won't be taking the full force of Magnus's psychic attacks. Now obviously he is a Primarch and probably the second strongest Psyker in the entire galaxy, so it makes sense that the blank powers of the Sisters of Silence wouldn't outright affect him so that he could have no powers, but still dampening his effects is greatly, greatly needed and that's kind of what gave Gilliman the upper hand in the battle. In a lot of these novels there is contradicting evidence, but at the end of the day, this is the basics when it comes to blanks and demons interacting. Blanks can see demons, however demons cannot perceive blanks. Weaker demons' perception of anybody standing near a blank is often obstructed. Stronger demons can see these people that are standing near blanks, and they can learn to identify where the blank is by focusing on these empty spaces in the warp. Now, like I said, this is quite controversial because a lot of times authors have the liberty to shape their stories in a variety of ways, so that may not always be the case. Like in some examples, the mere presence of the Emperor is enough to burn demons away, while other times that's not the case. So take that with a grain of salt. Uh, the thing about blanks, pariahs, nulls, is that we don't have enough information, honestly. Um, GW hasn't outright given us concrete lore, and cases do tend to change from person to person, so at the end of the day, this is just a mystery that is yet to be fully uncovered within the eyes of the Imperium. Now before I end the video, I do want to say that GW has a huge opportunity to continue the lore and benefit from this in the Sisters of Silence. This is a faction that can be used this is a faction that can be used dramatically to increase the popularity of this like three unit <laughs> faction that is basically just shoehorned at the end of the Custodes Codex and be made into their own actual full-fledged army. And since these women of silence are all about being blanks, pariahs, nulls, that could give us more lore to get into, more novels to come out, and it's just there for GW to pick up and use to give us more information on this pariah gene. But with that being said, I just want to say thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and this video should be one of the last ones to come out before Halloween, so hopefully you've enjoyed the Halloween and the spooky videos. And with that being said, we do have a creepypasta entitled Abduction to come out tomorrow. So thanks for watching guys. As always, this has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.